I would be remiss having sharing the stage with three astoundingly accomplished uh, female scientists and entrepreneurs, um, which is unfortunately still fairly rare in the in the tech entrepreneurship world. Um, any advice you have, either for uh, women entrepreneurs and scientists, that you could pass along? I know we have a, a group here called the Columbia Women Inventors Network, which is trying to uh, get folks together for conversation, networking, and, and learnings. But any advice you pass along, or just on entrepreneurship in general? Anything you think the one or two things you think the audience should take away from this? Well, I, I would say that the one thing you you um, or at least I myself strive uh, uh, to is focus on the numbers, choose a technology that is uh, um, very clear cut, meaning these are the parameters that needs to be uh, achieved, and then you, you actually do it. And I'm fortunate that uh, in engineering, even applied engineering to all kinds of uh, different areas, this can be done, but I think also in, in life science, you, you, can, you, you can also do that. And that kind of uh, relieves all subjectiveness, or maybe politics, or maybe bias that we all as a society has. It relieves that. Either if you have the numbers, this is it. Yeah, I second this. That's, I think, one of the big advantages, actually, in these more scientific worlds. If it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't, and it doesn't really matter what gender you have. If you have something that is irresistible, go for it, and uh, it'll take you there, you know? And, and the new generations, much younger than me, they will, uh, you know, they will take that much lighter. I, I, I expect, uh, I hope. So, it's also a good opportunity if you, you know, I want to point that out. There are no, not too many role models, so you can just do as you like. That's also good. I get into trouble when I do as I like. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I guess you don't want our Me Too stories, right? We only have one minute left on the panel, so we'll skip the Me Too we stories. We all have many of We many do of have those. the Me Too stories, but not today, maybe. So I would say that, um, so I think there's a tendency in this, I've seen this in the rooms for our male scientists, colleagues. I think there's a tendency by the business partners to need to school us, you know, feel the need to sort of, um, you know, treat us like we don't know what we're doing in the business world, which is the truth for most of it, at least for your first deal. But by the second deal, you need to be really good at your game. And so I think the power of um, learning how to leverage being underestimated is very important. So we're all underestimated for a living. I'm speaking for all three of us because I know that that's true for them. Um, but um, learning how to capture that being underestimated and turn it around and use it like Wonder Woman right back at them is your most powerful weapon. So by the time you do your second deal, <laughs> you got to have your golden lasso ready. So it's very hard the first time because you really don't know what you're doing. But by the second time, whether your first deal goes good, bad, or in the middle, you will learn some really hard truths and lessons from that. The best thing you can do with that, at least in my experience, having gone through round two and now round three, is to let them think you're underprepared or let them underestimate at their own peril. And by the time you negotiate that second deal, they should be cowering in the corner. So. <laughs>